Welcome back to Just Blizzard Programming. Did you miss me? Because I had COVID and now I'm back here making videos once more. Yes. So, I hope so. Or, you know, whatever. Or you're just enjoying your holidays. Either way, wherever you are, I hope you're having a good time. So, what's on the agenda for today? Today we're going to be studying or looking at navigation locks. Something that has been implemented in .NET 7. So, you guys that are in .NET 6 or below, you don't have this feature, unfortunately. But it is available and it does actually work in .NET 7. So we're going to be looking at that today. And it's actually pretty easy. So uh, let's get started. So as you can see on this uh, on this photo, the these are the new elements that are, have been added to .NET 7. So specifically for Blazor, we are looking at these two, navigation lock and location changing. So I really want to get into the nitty gritty already just to show you how easy it really is. And it does require a little bit of uh, setup because you need something to set this up with. So I'm just going to explain that to you. Also, in case you didn't know, yeah, I was sick with COVID and I feel a lot better now. So I'm going to get back to making videos. So hopefully by the time you see this, you've already went through, you know, your holidays and stuff. If you're in the U.S. or if you celebrate Christmas, whatever it is. And if not, then I just hope you enjoy the weekend because I'm planning on putting this out on Monday. So. Uh, I'm just going to take out the navigation. Uh, I created a new page, basically. So I have a just a new uh, a new component. I call it form with nav. So if you want to follow me, you can, but you don't really have to follow all these steps. Just know that what I have here is just an edit form with a model that I created. So in this case, this particular model, I go to it where test form is. The, the model, the, the class that represents this model is actually within my data, um, within my data folder. And this is a Blazor server, Blazor server uh, application. So if I go to here, not that there, if I go here, you see this is actually a .NET 7 um, uh, Blazor application. So when you are creating your Blazor application, all you have to do is make sure that wh whichever one, it doesn't matter if it's Blazor WebAssembly or not. I'm just going to do this real quick. Um, you create a new one. You can pick whether an empty one or the, the normal one. I'm, I usually pick the normal one because I already have stuff prepared. So then, you know, uh, add block one or something. And then up here, you pick the actual target framework you want. So long-term support is the one that lasts a lot longer than .NET 7, but today we're work focusing on the .NET 7 feature, so obviously you want .NET 7, and then you're ready to go from that. But since I already, obviously, I have this, uh, I have all this already prepared, what I have here is just a simple form with uh, for, uh, a few input texts and an input number, and a model that is just, uh, you know, it has four properties, and that is really it, the, the model itself, the class itself is within the data folder, and all I have up here is just the URI, you know, uh, making sure that I have the actual reference to that folder, the the data uh, the, the data directory. I have JS runtime because we're actually I'm actually going to show you through using a JS uh, interrupt um, to, to trigger an alert message essentially, and then the navigation manager that um, that we need in order to do the navigation stuff down here. So I'm just going to get I'm just going to start teaching you what's happening on this page. So let's just go into that page. So right now. This is how that looks like. I didn't do anything fancy. I just added the the um the three edit form uh, components, or three input selects and one boolean. I think that you don't have to go that far. You just really need um some edit form setup, and then I have two other um uh, two other variables I created right on the page. One for a location, and one to see whether or not it, you've intercepted the actual uh the actual navigation change. So within .NET 7, you can do this now. And the way you do it is through the navigation lock component. So this component right here. So this component, all it has are two variables. So if I actually go here, implementation, I guess I can't look at it here, but um, all it has is our, our two, um, it has two properties, confirm external navigation, and on before internal navigation. So one of them is an actual Boolean. So here, all you could add is a true false. So this means that if I try to leave or try to reload the site, it's going to try to stop me um, before I do that. And on before internal is actually a, an event callback. So this is actually like a 
an actual function you can add. So this is within the actual application. So if I go from tab to tab within my web application, it that's what it's this particular was going to trigger, you're going to see a difference between the confirm external versus the before navigation. Now all of this has been said before within another video that they created. Um, I think I'll have that in the description below. But uh, I'm just going through what's actually happening in more detail, they kind of created their they, they kind of made it really quickly. So I'm just going to go into it a little bit more. This here is the location changing context. So here we actually have this, uh, this is this goes with the location change portion of it all. This part here. And here's where we actually get information that's useful to us. The most uh, useful information here uh, that we would like is the target location and the is navigation intercepted. This tells me whether or not something's been intercepted, and this tells me where I'm planning on going uh, if uh, you know if I were to not be intercepted. Uh, and this right here is the reason why we have our JS runtime is because we're just invoking the confirm. Um, we're just essentially we're just invoking the the confirm um, JavaScript function that just gives you a little pop out that says you know confirm blah blah blah. That yes or no, you want to go navigate to wherever, and and if it, I do not confirm it, then another prevent that navigation function is going to activate, and that will stop you from actually leaving the page, or it will stop you from completing the call to the URI. I can't stop you from actually exiting or whatever, but I can stop you from navigating to somewhere else if need be. And we're just going to see it's going to be really it is, and as I said before, it's actually pretty simple. So all this is is just a function that uses the location changing context um, in order to get data, which is the target location and whether or not it's been intercepted, and to prevent the actual navigation. And in this case, confirm external navigation is just uh, essentially doing what this is doing, except that it's all built in and you can't really uh, manipulate it in that way and without some extra steps at least. So that is really all that I have done here. And we're just going to look at it real quick. So there's, in fact, you don't really have to do anything here. Now that we're working on it, I'm going to go try to go to my homepage. And it says, Are you sure you want to navigate to the index page? Now this is just a um, now it doesn't matter which I pick, it's gonna, it's gonna say that because that is what's been hard coded into the actual message. So there's nothing fancy going on here. And I'm gonna say cancel. And what happens here is that I got the target location when I was going, and it tells me whether or not it was intercepted, it was true. Now I assume that if I try to go and it will say false, if I go here, press OK, and go back here. Yeah, so obviously, uh, it just refreshed the rendering once I did that. So if I try going back to home again, I press cancel, I'll get that message. And if I go to fetch data and press cancel, it's going to actually change to the target location. So that is uh, that, that that's the actual internal one. So I believe the internal one is called uh, on before internal navigation. So that's what's actually triggering it, you're seeing this happen. And this is a, a very simple way of actually implementing it, you, you check whether or not I've confirmed some message or whatever. And then I, whether or not I've confirmed it, that determines whether or not I want to prevent you from navigating to some place or whatever. And these are just to show you, you know, how um, some values you can get. So now let's try the other one, the confirm na uh, external navigation. That one we don't really have as much control over. It's just a Boolean. And in this case, in order to do that, we want to refresh the page so you could actually see it happen. So this is what happens when you have this one turned on. It says changes you made may not be saved. And I'm going to pick cancel. Well, nothing's going to happen here because this is not, uh, this only gets triggered on the internal one, this was the external one that that happened. So if I try doing that again, and press reload, then all that happens, is it allows me to reload. So if I try, I don't know, let's say going somewhere where it doesn't exist. No, it doesn't stop you. So Unfortunately, there's only so much that you can actually do with that. Um, the external navigation, obviously, I can't stop someone from just doing whatever or changing the URI and making that um, and then stopping them from that point. If I wanted to, uh, the, the if I really wanted to, I could try to do that. But I don't think it, it's really built for that. I think it's just to make you stop the actual page rendering um, or, or reloading the page once more. 
Oh, I, I forgot to mention that you could also stop someone from closing the page. So you see that changes you made may not be seen. That's the external um, navigation one that's actually triggering. So I just wanted to put that uh, because I, I just forgot to add that. <laughs> and that's all I could really do with that other one. With the internal one, I have more control over it. And I could actually, you know, maybe I could get whatever the target location is going to be. Set that there. Tell me like, oh, where am I trying to go? So why is this important? This is this seems really simple, right? Like there's nothing really too complex about it. It's just two properties. I have one that I have more control over. I could actually make an actual function that does more and I could be more customized within my own application than I can going to somewhere external or even reloading it. So what, why do I even bring this up? Why was this even a, a thing that was asked for? Because this was something that was asked for by the community. And the reason why is because you can't do this in Blazor otherwise. And before this, there is actually no way of uh, tar uh, intercepting the navigation, at least not within Blazor, not within the Blazor framework. And that's why people wanted it because it just didn't exist. And this is usually um, outside the Blazor framework. Say you were using something like JavaScript, Angular, uh, React, whatever it might be, you would have like a prevent default that allowed you to do this. So you could actually do something like this within uh, a JavaScript framework. But unfortunately, because how Blazor renders stuff, you can't really do this um, as is. You can follow some best practices in order to have a better user experience when it comes to using Blazor, especially when it comes to moving off of the page and warning them that something is saved. The best thing you can do is have state management. And if you want to know more about state management, I have a video on that and I'll probably put up here. And you know, and there's really nothing else you can do there. I, um, I'm not sure when it comes to the JS runtime that you could actually do much to the actual rendering. Uh, like this, because what's happening here is that I have a function that allows me to prevent the navigation, which does not exist right now in Blazor in .NET 6. So that is the unfortunate thing about this navigation lock that it only exists in .NET 7. And if you want to use it, you have to have the .NET 7 framework like that would be the best way of implementing it. And if you yeah, and, and then that goes uh, with the argument of whether or not it's worth having something that's going to expire, you know, that the actual .NET 7 support is going to expire first before the .NET 6 one. So there's not really a good way of implementing this sort of feature outside of .NET 7. That's what I wanted to bring up. So even though it seems like a very, very simple, uh, you know, thing to look at, the the fact that you can't do this before .NET 7 is actually kind of kind of crappy but now you can so i'm glad that they at least listened to the community and implemented this feature it's actually really nice to have and it allows a and it does it does allow for a better user experience and it's actually very easy to implement so you're not losing out on anything really um just having it like you you're not really it's not thing um it's not a lot of processing happening. It's not a lot of bloat happening. This actually provides a, you know, just having something that tells me, hey, please don't leave the page until you're done with, you know, my editing or whatever. Then that's that's pretty, that's fine with me. There's nothing here that uh, you can go more in depth. You can actually see whether or not um, as long as, like, I believe in the example within the other thing, they're, they actually go out of their way to, um, in the other video, they actually go out of their way to show you how to, implement this with modifications done to the form. I have I haven't done that here. This is just to simply show you how the navigation lock works at the most basic level. I right, we could do a, a small tutorial like that if, uh, in the future. But um, you know, I just stuck to whatever is the most basic way of implementing it, which is just having it on your page to make sure that a person doesn't get off the page until you want them to get off the page. So which uh, I do find to be useful. Well, anyways, uh, this is not oh, okay. I turn it off. <laughs> so um, that's really there's nothing much more here with navigation like apart from maybe a more robust example that I do not have at the moment, which I'm sorry for. However, I think this is enough for um, to just very basic. Uh, just have a very basic navigation log scenario that you can have on any page you want if you want to actually make the user confirm that they're leaving the page or what or not.
because the only way around it, at least in .NET 6, is to actually have your state management handle the saving of data and stuff like that, because um, you, you really have no other choice. So I don't think there's much more to harp on on this. I think that is it for navigation lock, at least for the very, very basic uh, sample of it. Um, yeah, so uh, I think later on we'll be working on more of the .NET 7 features coming up. So there's other stuff that I could work on and show that I haven't already shown before. I know I've shown some things here, empty templates, and you know, the actually a hot load is actually has been improved. So I use that in my when I was creating my tests. So that's pretty good. And I could go other over these other elements later on once I, you know, actually get back to my groove, my grind. So I do thank you very much. And I do wish you a very nice holiday seasons, whatever holidays you might celebrate, may or may not celebrate. You know, I'm not discriminatory here. And I do wish you luck on your endeavors. I know this isn't that much, you know, there, there wasn't much to explain here. This is actually a very, very easy component. But um, uh, but I do believe that is very, very useful, especially if you want to give uh, users a better experience and just give them that a little bit more information that they could need so that they're not like guessing as to whether or not their data was saved or if they should be leaving the page or whatever. That is that is something that usually you, you kind of overlook when you're building these things, how they feel when something is happening and whether or not they've completed something and giving them more information like that is actually pretty good overall and uh, much appreciated. So anyways, I hope you guys have a good holiday and or had a good holiday, depending on when this video comes out. So anyways, I'm out of here and see you next week, I guess.